Greetings everyone. Welcome to Jamaican Queen TV. I wanted to come in here and give my perspective about why the Jamaican government has not yet legalized marijuana. I came across a story in the news during the first week of January. The story was talking about how California had legalized marijuana and the state alone had earned billions of dollars from the marijuana industry over the years. And so I decided to do some research on my own country, a country big on agriculture and farming, the birthplace of the Rastafari movement, which marijuana is sacramental, Jamaica, the place where people are relatively more medical holistic is trailing behind when it comes to the issue around the, mar around the legalization of marijuana. While doing my research, I was surprised but not surprised to find out the Jamaican government and the U.S. often mirror each other when the marijuana issue came up in the law. It illustrates the connection between the Jamaican government and the U.S. empire have been since colonial days and how the Jamaican since so-called independence has chosen to trail behind the colonial empires such as the US and England and follow direction on how to move forward. So I decided to do some research about the times, but about all the times when the topic of marijuana was a discussion in Jamaican government. And ironically, I found that whenever it was, there always a discussion going on in the US. Here is what I found in Jamaica, there was a law passed in July 1913. This was the law that criminalized marijuana. The opium law, the opium law. The following are the section dealing with ganja. Law 15 of 1913. Section three, it shall not be lawful to import into this island any prepared opium or ganja. Section nine. No person shall grow ganja in this island. Section 10, any person contravening mean prohibit the provision of any of the preceding section shall an unsummary conviction before a resident magistrate be liable to a penalty not exceeding 100 pound and in default of payment to imprisonment with or without odd labor. The resident magistrate may order that any ganja growing on this island shall be destroyed. Guys, this is a racist law that put in place to oppress, specifically put in place to oppress poor black people. So a month later, on August 10, 1913, the topic of marijuana was brought up for the first time in the US. The state of California passed the Pison Act Amendment. This law specifically took aim at Mexican, Chinese, and black men. During the public discussion of the 1930s, claims were made about marijuana ability to cause men of color to become violent and solicit sex from white women. This perfectly illustrates the racist reason for passing these marijuana law both in the US and in Jamaica. The next time the topic of marijuana came up in the US was between 1973 and 1978. By this time, 11 states has decriminalized marijuana. In the midst of these US changes, the Jamaican government in 1977 decided to set up a joint select committee to consider the criminality legislation uses abuses and possible medical benefit of ganja this committee did not recommend legalization but suggest that the law should be amended for decriminalization of possible personal use absolutely nothing came of this by this time, the Jamaican government had their so-called independence for 15 years, 
but chose to keep these colonial law in place to keep black people in their control. In the year 2000, having made no progress regarding the colonial law created in 1913, the Jamaican government formed yet another committee on ganja. This commission also recommend decriminalization, but its recommendation was never implemented. While in the U.S., in 2001, another state, Nevada, reduced possession to a misdemeanor. Since 2012, several U.S. states started again to decriminalize and even legalize the herb. Today, it has become a multi-billion dollar industry for the U.S. 6.7 billion to be exact. In, in January 2014, legislation debate was brought up again in, the Jamaica, in Jamaica because the state of Colorado legalized marijuana. Concerns were raised that Jamaica might lose out on the economic benefit. Because of this reason alone, they decided to decriminalize. I want to emphasize that the Jamaican government did not decide to decriminalize the herb in the 70s or early 2000s when both committees recommend that it was best to ease up on the local people by decriminalizing the plant. No, they only felt it necessary to ease up once they realized that the U.S. empire was making billions of dollars and their pocket could also be lined. To continue the following trend, Jamaica marijuana law pretty much mirror the one of several U.S. states. Jamaica is supposed to be a so-called independent country, but still wait for the U.S. and England to take action and then act in the exact way. The government of Jamaica is full of colonized mind and I would not waste my time waiting for them to decolonize their mind. I don't see that happening. So it's up to the everyday people to decolonize their mind, reclaim their power, reclaim their independence, reclaim their intelligence, reclaim their common sense, begin to mobilize, organize, and set standard for yourself.